Amen. We looked at walking in divine health last Sunday as one of our possessions which Jesus accomplished for us at the cross. And I told us that today we'll be looking at walking in divine prosperity. As I prepared myself or try to prepare myself for that purpose, I observed that we need to study first walking in divine blessings. If you remember, there are seven of them, seven exchanges that Jesus accomplished for us at the cross. So I observed that we have to treat walking in divine blessings first before we can fully understand walking in divine prosperity. Divine blessings is the foundation of divine prosperity. For it is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow to it. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. Let's read Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14 to review what we have already known. One of the accomplishments of Jesus for us at the cross. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. Why? Let's read it together. Why did Christ become a curse for us? Why? So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles, in Christ Jesus. And that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. By what? By faith. If you look at verse 10 of the same Galatians chapter 3, you will observe that everyone who cannot keep the law of Moses comes under a curse. That Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 repeated what was written in Deuteronomy 27 verse 26. He said, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curse is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. And for your information, there is no one person like that. There is no one person who continues in everything that is written in the law of Moses to do them. So that means that everybody comes under that's what the Bible said. And for God to redeem us from that cause of the law he has to send Jesus to die. And he said because cause is everyone who hangs on the tree by hanging on the tree, by dying on the cross, he has redeemed us. He has bought us over. He has freed us from the curse of the law. So that the blessing of Abraham. So at that cross, the curse that is supposed to be upon us was exchanged with the blessings of Abraham. So we are supposed to be people that are working in the blessings of Abraham, in divine blessings. Amen. And so we are going to, first of all, try to uh, understand what divine blessings is all about. And then we look at what causes are all about. And then how they manifest and how to be free from them. Then we can now talk about walking in divine blessing so let's start with understanding divine blessing these blessings that god has brought us into if you don't understand it you will not be able to walk into it how do you know a man that is 
divinely blessed. Abraham was our case study in verse 1 of chapter 24 of Genesis. The Bible says that the Lord blessed Abraham in all things. Abraham was old and was stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in how many things? In all things. In all things. Let me say this. The way God created man from the beginning when he created Adam and Eve, God knew that the man he created cannot operate, cannot achieve his purpose for creating him without blessings. And that is why immediately he finished making man in Genesis verse, chapter 1 verse 26. In verse 28, the Bible says, and the Lord blessed them. The first thing that the Lord did to the man he created was bless him. Because he knew that without blessing, he will not be able to achieve the purpose. What is the purpose of God creating man? In verse 26, he said, let us make man in our own image. And in our own likeness, that they will have dominion. And then for man to have dominion, he has to release blessing. And the Lord bless them. He said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and then have dominion. Listen, without that blessing, it is not possible for man to achieve that purpose. Even after the flood, in Genesis chapter 9 verse 1, the Lord has to come down again to bless Noah. Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. God blessed Noah and his son and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Amen. Now, I want us to note that when God releases his blessing upon a man, angels are deployed to ensure that Everything that God has released unto that man is fulfilled. Let me say this. Blessing is direct opposite of curse. When a curse is released, demons, angels of darkness are released to ensure that whatever the curse is talking about is executed. But when a blessing is released from God, then angels are deployed to execute the tenets of that blessing. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, I want us to read quickly God's blessing for those that kept is um, commandments, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. It shall come to pass, God was talking to the Israelites through Moses. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Verse 3. Blessed shall thou be in the city. And blessed shall thou be in the field. Don't just think that God is just repeating things for repetition's sake. Somebody can be blessed in the city. But is not blessed in the field. Are you, are you following? He was very careful to list different levels, dimensions of blessings that will come upon the man that diligently listens to his word and obey them. He said, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your kind, the flocks of your sheep, 
Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall be thou when thou comest in. And blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Amen. He said, The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee. How many ways? Seven ways. Seven ways. Let's read verse 8 together, everybody. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee, we are in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God did what? If you look at verse 11, and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle. And in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear to thy fathers to give thee. Verse 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heavens, to give thee rain unto thy land in his season. And to bless all the work of your hand. To bless what? All the work of your hand. All of them. And thou shalt lend unto what? Many nations. And thou shalt not what? Borrow. So it is a blessing to, to lend. Are you following? You shall not borrow. You shall not be in debt. And then the Lord shall make thee the head. And not the what? And not the tail. And thou shalt be above. How? Only. And thou shalt not be what? Beneath. Are you getting this? You see, it is all encompassing. That's what it, it means to be blessed. When you also read Psalm 112, praise it the Lord, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his what? So what kind of man is blessed? The one that feareth the Lord, the one that does what? Delighted greatly in his what? So what are the manifestations of those blessings? Verse 2. His seed, his children, shall be what? Mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3. Want to go? Wealth and riches shall be where? His house. And his righteousness does what? Endure it forever. Verse 4. Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. Is gracious, full of compassion, and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. Are you noticing something? He is a lender, is not a borrower. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid. Until he sees his desires upon his enemies. Verse 9. Everybody read together. I want to go. He has dispersed. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endureth what? His horn shall be exalted with honor. Psalm 128 also describes this man that feareth the Lord. How blessed he is. Let's read it together. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. Everyone. That walketh in his what? In his ways. He said, for thou shalt eat the labor of your hands. It is a blessing to eat what? The labor of your hands. Some people labor and they don't eat the labor of their hands. Does it happen? Does it happen? You see a mother, a father laboring over his children training them in school, when it is time for them to now start giving him something to eat, what happened? The person will die. The person will fall sick. When a man is blessed, that man will not die at that time. The Bible says he will eat what? The labors of his hand. He said, happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. It shall be well with thee. Now he goes to the man as a man. He said, Thy wife 
shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thy house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Everybody that sits together, want to go. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace. That's talking about long life. You will not just see your children. You will not bury your children. Rather, your children will marry in your presence and give birth to children. And you will see your children, children. I want us to see scriptures that talks about this blessing. Because... You need to understand what it means to be divinely blessed by God. So when you are blessed, you know you are blessed by God. If you are not blessed, you will now contend for it. Because we are looking at today, walking in divine blessing. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 to verse 12. He said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here which says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the what? The windows of heaven. And do what? And pour you out a blessing. That there shall be no room enough to what? To receive it. Are you noticing something there? There is a blessing that God has with him in heaven. And when a man is faithful in financial stewardship, tithes, thanksgiving, he said, I will open the windows. Are you noticing that heaven does not have only one window? How many windows, you know? Do you know? Windows of heaven. And we pour out a blessing. Verse 11. And I will rebook the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord. So, when God does that, he will also protect what he gave to you. That's part of the blessing. Go, go to the next verse. And all nations, how many nations? All nations. Shall do what? They shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delight. Says Now listen, all nations shall call you blessed. They, they don't just open their mouth and say you are blessed without seeing the manifestations of the blessing. Are you following me? So when God began to separate Abraham from his kindred in Genesis chapter 12, he said to him, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land I will show you. Next verse. And I will make of thee a great nation and make thy name great and thou shalt, thou shalt be what? A blessing. Let's read verse 3 together. One to go. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So, you can see that when God wanted to start a walk with Abraham, the first thing he established with him is blessing. Blessing. In Genesis 24, we have read it before, but I wanted to see how the servant of Abraham that was sent to get wife for Isaac, you know, presented his master to the people. Genesis 24, verse 34. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. 35. And the Lord has blessed my master, how? Greatly. And he has become what? Great. And he has given him flocks and heads and silver and gold and men servants and men servants and camels and asses. Do you think that this man is a poor man? When the blessing of the Lord comes upon a man, the manifestation becomes prosperity. So we need to look at, this is the blessing of Abraham. The Bible says he was blessed in all things. And he became great. And as if somebody is asking, uh, what, 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 what about it? What, what, where are the blessings? He began to list it. He said, flocks, 
Flock is not just one goat or one sheep. Flock is a, will I say, group of, are you getting it? Now, it's not one flock. Flocks. Heads are group of cattle. Heads. And then, you talk about silver and gold. That's the name of money in those times. Then men, servants, oh, anything you can talk of. Camels, asses. You know why we are studying this? Because this is the purpose of God for us. I hope you are still following me. You remember last Sunday? What is the purpose of God for us as we studied last Sunday? Walking in divine health. This is our possession. That the blessings of Abraham will come upon us. And look at the blessings of Abraham. This blessing transferred to his seed, Isaac, such that in the year of famine, in Genesis 26, in the year of famine, he wanted to go to Egypt. God said, no, don't go to Egypt. Stay in the land. And if you look at verse 12, the Bible said, then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold. Why? That column there is like, let me explain the reason why this happened. If you know English language very well. He said, the reason why Isaac sowed in the land in the year of famine and had such increase. You see, what that means is that the economy that Isaac was operating on was not the economy of that land. Are you getting me at all? You see, we are in a serious economic crisis. I was listening to the message that I preached 2021 at the other venue where we used to be before we came here. And I saw where I was telling us then that, because that was when th the prices of things began to increase. And I was telling us things then that don't think that these things will come down. Did they come down? What is going on now? That is to tell you that if we are going to walk and escape this time and still fulfill the purpose of God for our life in this kind of times and season, we must operate a different economy, not the economy of Nigeria. Look at the economy that Isaac operated in. The Lord blessed him. The Lord is going to bless someone here today. Yeah. But that's very small compared to what we are going to get from this teaching. What God intended for us to get here is not just a momentary blessing like healing. No. It is to walk, to live perpetually in divine what? Blessings. Verse 13. And the man was great and went forward and grew until he became what? Very great. Remember, Abraham was great. Do you remember? The blessing of the Lord makes a man what? Great. Great. Verse 14. He said, for he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants and the Philistines envied him. He became the envy of a nation, one man. Verse 16, and Abimelech, that's the king of uh, the Philistines, said unto Isaac, go from us for you are mightier than we. He confirmed that one man has become greater than a whole nation. And then in verse 26, then Abimelech went to him from Gera. And Ahuza, one of his friends, and Fickle, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing you have hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. Eh? And we said, Let there be now an oath between us, even between us and thee, and let us make a covenant with you, that thou will not hurt us, as we have not touched thee, and as we have done unto thee, not, nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace, thou art now, the what? The blessed of the Lord. If you study 
to Jacob. You will notice in Genesis chapter 30, verse 25 to 27, where Laban, he went to serve Laban. Laban, he now told Laban, I want to go back to my father's house. And Laban said to him, don't go because I have come to learn by experience that the Lord has what? Bless me for your sake. I have learned not by theory, by practical, that I became blessed because you are with me. The same thing happened when Joseph watched the lineage, the seed of Abraham. When Joseph was in Potiphar's house, a strange man, eh, a servant, a slave. If you read Genesis chapter 39, verse 2 said, the Lord was with, with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and his master saw that the Lord was with him. The master did what? Saw that the Lord was with him. Was the Lord a physical person? He saw the Lord because of the manifestations of divine blessings around this young man. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper. We are in his hand. The Lord made everything he did to prosper in his hand. And then verse 4. And Joseph found grace in sight and he served him. So favor was following Joseph because of this blessing. He made him overseer over his house and all that he has put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon how many things? All that he had in the house and in the field. My brothers and sisters, there is something called the blessing of the Lord. I am trusting the Lord that all of us will walk into it and continue walking in it from today. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Obededom housed the ark of God in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 11 to 12. You know, they carried the ark of God to this man's house because somebody just died by the ark when he touched the ark, Oza. And when they carried him to the uh, house of Obededom, the Bible said in verse 11, and the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obededom, the Gittite three months, and the Lord did what? Blessed Obededom and all his... And it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obededom and all that pertained unto him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obededom into the city of David with gladness. There must be something that people saw that was not happening in the house of Obededom before then, that began to happen in the house of Obededom, in his children, both daughters, sons. They began to see things that are happening in that house. And they said, Kai, before this act, this presence of God came to this house. These things were not happening. But we have observed that for these three months, I mean, the things that are happening has shown that this is the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord is not a theory. It has a physical manifestation. That's why the Bible said, the blessing of the Lord make it rich. And added what? A man can get rich by crooked ways, by telling lies, by prostitution, by yahoo yahoo, by all kinds of joining our courts and secret societies. And you know, there are two things about that. One is that the Bible said there is no peace for the wicked. That's one. Number two is that at the end of this life, the person is going to be with the devil forever in hell. But there is a blessing that may get rich and adds no sorrow to it, whether in time or in eternity. That is the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Job chapter 1 verse 10. The devil himself was one that spoke to God and said, Has thou not made a hedge about him as a person and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast what? Blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Because you have blessed 
the work of his hands. His substance has increased in the land. Amen. So you can see that divine blessing is real. When the Bible says that the blessing of Abraham, nothing short of it should come upon us by the reason of Christ's death on the cross. It is something that you should not be quiet about. It is something that you must contend until you possess this same blessing of Abraham. Amen. Because it's something that God has purchased for us. Now, I want, you to, I want us to now look at this thing called curse. What is it? And how do they manifest? What are the things that causes them? Because until we know them, we will not be able to distinguish between a man that is blessed and a man that is cursed. Please pay attention. If you are not blessed, you are cursed. Did you hear what I said now? God created two opposite things. I, I keep saying that. If you are not alive, what are you? You are dead. If you are not a man, what are you? There is nothing in between. So it's either you are walking in the blessing of the Lord or you are walking under what? A curse. Now, I want you to note that, you know, this thing we call curse, the first person that cursed in the Bible is God. It's not just the devil. Are you hearing me? Is the, the first person. When Adam disobeyed God, do you remember? He said to Adam, curse is the ground for your sake. He said, by sweat, you will labor. You will not, in fact, before you eat, you will eat, oh, but before you eat, you will struggle. That's not the blessing. The blessing does not mean that you have to struggle, labor before, no. A, a great servant of God, Derek Prince, made some uh, statement about curse I want to read out. He said, a curse is like a dark shadow from the past. It did not originate with you and you may not know where it came from. It may have something to do with your family background then stretch sheets over your life and shut out the sunshine of God's blessings. You will see other people under that light of God, God's blessing, but you will not be enjoying it yourself. What are curses? Curses are words, it may be written, it may be spoken, that are charged with evil supernatural powers. An authority to negatively affect people. So be behind every curse, I've said it before, there is always an executor. And every curse has an evil spirit. Whether it is man that pronounced a curse or God that pro You know, the devil is, is just an evil personality. So anytime he hears anything evil, he goes there to execute. Sometimes and most times, a curse may not destroy a person, may not destroy, destroy his life, but it will place a limitation and say, you are not going to cross this level. And sometimes it forms a kind of a protective wall around somebody such that some things that are due him will not get to him. When a man is under a curse, he struggles. He struggles. But at the end of the day, he will look at the labor he is laboring and look at the result. He will notice that they are not matching. What he puts in is not even equivalent to what he gets out. A person under a curse sometimes may even seem to succeed. But at the same time, at the same time, that thing that you are looking at and people are calling success, the same person is frustrated. Is within, within him is frustrated. He's not happy. It's not, that's why when you look at some people that are even rich, they are not 
they don't have peace. They are not happy. They are frustrated. Sometimes you see somebody struggling, coming up to a particular level. This may happen both for spiritual life, both for ministry, both for business, both for anything at all. You, 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 you are coming up to a particular point in your life. And as if you are about to succeed, something will happen. And that thing that happens will bring that person back to where he started. And it, it, you will start struggling again. Sometimes it may happen in somebody's spiritual life. You will be struggling to grow as if you are coming to a particular level. Something will happen. And the person will go back again to zero level and start struggling again. Sometimes it looks as if you are about to come out of your depth to enter into a life of you know, financial freedom. And at that point, you are about to come out. Something will happen and take you back again. It may be a sickness that will just come up. It may be somebody that will just, well, maybe accident, something will just happen. These are what people pass through. And one character of causes is that they are transgenerational. They are from one generation to another. You know, when you read Exodus chapter 20, when God was listing the Ten Commandments to the children of Israel, the first and the second commandment that talks about, thou shalt not have any other God beside me. He said that he is a jealous God. He's a jealous God. And he visits the iniquity of the fathers to the fourth generation. So God moves from generation to generation. And it affects, so sometimes what somebody is suffering from is not really what he did. It may be what his father did, what his forefather did. In many families, there are a lot of negative patterns. Negative patterns. Sometimes you see a family that has a lot of setback, delays. The ladies will grow up, they will not be able to marry. The men will be struggling. In the whole family, you will not see a, any significant progress among the men. Sometimes it may be that the ladies or the men will marry, but they will not have children. Or they will, they will not marry correctly. A lady came for counseling one day. And in fact, she said to me that she wanted me to pray for her so that her husband will come and pay her bride price. I said, mistake number one, she, he's not your husband. He's your boyfriend. They have had children, you know, two or three or so. And... They are living together. They are not married. He said that my husband will have something to come and, you know, and when I asked her a question about her two sisters, she said that her two sisters are in their boyfriend's house with children too. No bride price has been paid. So this person came up, entered a, a, a man's house and started having children. The other person came up, I mean, these are, these are things that shows that that particular lineage, that family is under a curse. Sometimes you hear people's story. They say, ah, before I ever break out and got married, it was a battle. Have you had that kind of thing before? It was a battle. So that person has to battle in order to possess that particular possession. Because if it is the curse under the, that is overshadowing the family, he will not be able to get married. These things are real. And it happens, sometimes you notice that there are mysterious deaths happening. I was in a family at Anambara some years ago to pray over the night. And the man was telling me the story of how people were dying in the family. A young man just came out to do jogging. You know this morning jogging. As he was just jogging, a vehicle hit him and he died. And that is how people kept dying from that family. Mysterious deaths, accidents, you know, suicide. Stray bullets will just come up. And the only person it will get is that person. 
these are evidence that there are something that is manipulating these things. A case can also manifest in people having sicknesses that are in the lineage. You know, when you say that you have uh, somebody has uh, hypertension and they say the hypertension is in your blood. Yeah. Let, let me be honest with you. There is nothing like God did not create human body with hypertension. Are you getting me? That thing is a curse in the lineage. You say, your father has diabetes, you should have diabetes. No. Some families, you notice that there is madness. Somebody is mad. Some family will give birth to imbecile. Some of these things are being manipulated somewhere. I didn't say all of them. Some of them. Eyes, sicknesses, cataracts, like all those things. You see people developing it according to lineage. Sometimes it may be seasonal sicknesses. There are some families that if this person marry, divorce. The other person, you say, uh, my, three of my aunties have married, they have divorced. They are back in their father's house. These things are not ordinary. It's in the family. It's a curse that is following the family. Sometimes you see fathers from that family, men, married, irresponsible. Poly polygamous family, you see somebody, you know, in most polygamous families, you notice that the man will just keep marrying and keep, keep giving birth. Most times, he doesn't want to take care of the children. He will just say to the children, go to your mother, go to your mother. And the, the children will also grow up to become polygamous. Because there is something from their father. You see, when we begin to look at the causes of cause, you will notice that whatever a man is doing that is contrary to the word of God, against God, can bring a cost to his life. If it is your father that did it and the cost come upon him, they, that's one thing about cost. It moves from your father to you, except you stop it by the cross. That's why we are studying this. Listen, more than 70% of poverty in the society and even among, especially among believers. You know, sometimes you ask believers, you have to be disciplined, you have to be diligent. Let me say this. A cause can make somebody to be lazy. Manipulate somebody, you will not be able to take the right decision. These are spirits. There are spirits that are insisting that, you know, this person, sometimes, have you had something like this? Somebody will, will call you and say, hi, I just remembered you now. Hi, I wish I had remembered you yesterday. I would have, they, they just give somebody the job now. I mean, the person Immediately the job was given to another person. He remembers you. What is it that kept that? These are manipulations. The, the word is not just physical, it's spiritual. And this spirit has been there. And let me say this. We Africans, we are hit most in this. Because we know that our ancestors are idol worshippers. Two of us. They served all kinds of idols. So those things they did, they are transgenerational. Some of us, our fathers, we are dedicated to idols. Sometimes you see, uh, you know, uh, uh, miscarriages. You see children die, a, a woman giving birth, and the children keep dying, young, dying. Some of these things are not ordinary. There are spirits that are overseeing them, manipulating them, ensuring that those things affect people. Sometimes you notice a family is struggling to have, even if it's one person as a graduate in the family. If anybody wants to come up, there's no money to train. If there's the money, the people will not be willing to go to school. And then you see strange dreams, seeing dead people in the dream, discussing with them, Acting, eating with them, celebrating with them, and you wake up, you notice that these are dead people. Sometimes it may be seeing yourself in the water, in flying, seeing yourself in the primary school. You are, you are now uh, a father of three. You are still dreaming when you are in primary school, writing an exam. Sometimes you will be writing an exam that doesn't have an end. 
These are kind of things that will show you that something is wrong. Sexual perverseness, molestations, these things can become a sign that whether somebody or a family is under a curse. Now, I want us to note that even when a man is free from a curse, if he gets married to a woman that carries curse from his family background, I mean, are you getting me at all? Have you seen where a man is doing well in business? He's growing and suddenly maybe doing well financially and then he gets married and after the marriage what happens? Everything will fall. He become poor. It's not the woman that is the devil. It may be that from her own side and you when you are getting married for unbelievers there's no, there's no help at all because they cannot fight the battle. But for brothers that are getting married, these are the reasons why we need to train our brothers because if you don't you know, do the homework well, when you get married, the spirits that are fighting and working against that lady from her father's house will come. The same thing happens to the lady too. A lady can be doing well in her father's house. The moment she got married, ah, she will enter into confusion. And you're wondering what is happening to her. These things I'm talking about, are they not happening? So these things are serious. Sometimes you see somebody is under serious financial hardship. There is no time what you have is enough. And sometimes when you are about to bring up your finance to a particular level because you want to do a project, as if something will just come and bring it down. Sometimes you see somebody, after he finished one battle, as he's about to conclude one battle, another battle is coming. Somebody told me, he said, that he has money, he has car, and then the moment he gave birth to one of his sons, guess what happened? The son became sick from the hospital. And he was trying to treat this boy they carried him to incubator, oxygen, all those kind of things. And the moment his money, he has sold his car, his money finished, the boy became well. As of the time the boy became well, he's already a poor man. No, no, nothing, all those things are gone. And he continued in that struggle. What are the things that causes curses. In Proverbs 26, verse, I think it should be verse 1. Go to verse 2. Okay, let's read it together. I want to go. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so curse, curseless shall not come. You know what it is saying? If there is no reason for a curse, it will not happen. It will not happen. There must be a reason. Let me ask a question before I go on. How many of us here, you notice in your life, whether your physical life, spiritual life, financial life, marital life, things are not going the way it should go. Can I see your up? Things are not flowing. Sometimes you want them to move, they refuse to move. Somebody is going to walk out of a curse today Amen. and practically enter into divine blessing. Amen. Amen. So what are the things that will happen and a man will come under a curse? If you read the same Deuteronomy 28 that we read before, you will notice that from verse 15 down to the last verse, 54 verses, those verses, the Lord was talking about curse. Look at verse 45. Let's just pick one or two verses from there. He said, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be. Why? 
Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his status which he commanded thee. Look at the way God behave. It increases with time. He said, all of them, eh, they will come upon you. They will not just come upon you. What will they do again? Causes has leg to run. They will pursue you. And if you think that you can run better than causes, what will happen? They will now overtake you, block you. And then when they overtake and block you, what is nursing? Amen. I hope you are following me. Let me give you an example. In a family, there are people that, they say ladies that grew up, they didn't get married, two, three, four. Now, sometimes you will say, eh, it's because they have bad character. But listen, the cause has the ability of manipulating people's character too. So that they will, maybe at the point a man is thinking of getting married to that person, they, they, that spirit will move in to display that character. And the moment he displays that character, that man will run away. So, disobedience to God's commandments. Anytime you are committing sin, sin, doing what God says you should not do, and not doing what God says you should do, it attracts a cause. And remember, any cause that comes upon a man is going to transfer to his children. Amen. Now, you talk about idolatry. God made it so clear. It's part of disobeying God, but this one is special. God was so serious. He said, when you have any other God beside me, I am going to visit the iniquity to the fourth generation. So look at a generation that grew up. It was not them that did what was happening. It was their father. It was their forefather. Maybe their father is a native doctor. Their forefather is a native doctor. Their mother is S and Y. That, you know, did once, worshipped idol. And a curse can flow from there. Occult, secret society, listen. You know, there are many things people are doing, even in the village. In the village, you notice that a time will come, they will say, every male, male child will enter into masquerade. Masquerade court. You know those things? Now, these are entering into covenant with ancestral spirits. They just want to connect them to. These are the things that the moment you get initiated into that, those costs will start flowing. Listen, you know, the issue of course is very serious. Look at what this scripture said. He said, he will pursue you. That is to say, even if you get visa and travel to Canada, travel to US, what will happen to the course? He will pursue you to Canada. Wherever you are, he will pursue you there. And while other people are succeeding there, you will notice that you will still not succeed there. Have you not seen people that travel and come back poorer? So, any, anything you, you did or that was done by your parents with the devil in terms of occult, you know, some people, you go to a native doctor, they will tell you, there are many, many practices in our Igbo culture. I hope you know that. There are times they will say, hey, this person, you know, they are going to appease the gods, uh, you know those things. Listen, all of those things are things that they do to strengthen the cause. There's no solution there. Any practice that is idolatrous, occultic, they go to water, they do all those things. Those things can introduce and establish a cause. Sometimes you see a woman, he will go to go anywhere because he's looking for a child. Anywhere at all. He will get a child and then give birth. But look at that child struggling. Look at the children. They will, so when the time comes for the children to become somebody, you notice that they will be struggling. Struggling for what they don't know about. Some people will finish going to school, get good certificate, but they will not be able to get job. They will try what other people are trying. It will not work. I'm not saying that every case like that is a product of course, but most of the cases are, there, are, are like that. A young man met me some years ago for counseling. He said that any time he wants to go for job interview, a lady will come 
in the dream and sleep with him. You have sex in the dream. And when he goes for an interview, they will tell him, please go. They will just dismiss him. I asked him, how long has this happened? He said, five years. Five years after graduation. But there is a reason for that cause. What is the reason? He is living in sexual immorality with a girl for that five years. When he repented, I led him to repentance prayer, prayed for him. He cut that relationship off. And then within two weeks, he called me on phone and said, I've gotten a job. Five years, jobless. And then when he handled the course, so sexual immorality and every other sin, I hope you know that God told us clearly in the word, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, that disobedience to parents will lead to a curse. Eh? Disobedient to parents. When you don't honor your parents, when you don't take care of your parents, he said that it shall be well with you. So when you don't honor them, it will not be well with you. Eh, but my father is bad. My mother is bad. But no, God did not say honor your father and your mother if, it's, if, if they are good. Honor your father and your mother, whether they are good or bad. Are they your father and your mother? Honor them so that your days will be long. So when you see people dying, you know, by accidents, dying untimely, by sickness, by diseases, when you see people, things are not well with them. They are struggling. Let me be honest. For many of us, hard work is not the problem. You wake up in the morning. Some of you don't even do your quiet time because you are struggling to work hard and meet up. But at the end of the day, from January to December, you are almost where you are at the beginning. Sometimes you are owing small amount of money before January. By December, you are now owing bigger amount of money with all your hard work and labor. Does it happen? Somebody must walk out of these things in the name of Jesus. When you maltreat the helpless, God releases causes. We have seen it. Man can also release costs and it will work. The devil and his agents also cost. Are you getting me? Let me give you an example. There are a lot of stories of families where they said somebody died. They say a chief or a king died and they said they must bury the person with a human being. Most times when they catch those people and they are burying the person with those people, they will lay a curse on the family. Either cause of barrenness, they are helpless, they are kidnapped, so they cannot. So, the same thing with a baby in the womb a baby in the womb is a human being, helpless, and you go and abort this baby. That's why such a person is under a serious curse, it can lead to any kind of setback. And if that curse is not dealt with, that's why even when you finish all of that, three abortions, four abortions, you get married, you start having problems, you start struggling. You may even have children, but cause can manifest from any angle. You just, to make sure that you don't rise and fulfill that purpose of God for your life. Some people say, but I am innocent. I didn't do all of that. I didn't commit fornication. I didn't do all of that. I didn't commit abortion. It may be the one that your mother did. That's the problem, of course. It may be the one that your father did. Your forefather. Are you getting me at all? This is a, because it will move from generation to generation. And that is why when God saw how men, human beings, were suffering on that call, he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus. So that by the reason of his death at Calvary, we can be redeemed from these causes. Amen. You know that a man called Jabez, you remember the story of Jabez? Jabez came under a curse because of his mother. Three of us. The woman delivered Jabez in pain and then gave him a name called Soru. Say, I delivered him in Soru. That young man, just because of that, he began to struggle. He began to struggle. He is not supposed to struggle. But because the mother laid a curse on him at the point of birth, he started struggling. So people that are in authority over others, for example, don't joke with fathers. A father has authority over his children. And when a father pronounces a word, 
most times it comes to pass. And that's why a man is not supposed to be talking too much. A man. A woman can talk so many things. If you're a man, before you open your mouth to talk to your wife and to talk to your children, think about it because your words are not ordinary words. That's why even blessing comes from fathers. Do you remember Isaac blessing his children? Those blessings, God honors it. And then somebody can lay curse on himself. Yes, you by your own words. Bible says in Proverbs 18.21 that death and life are in the power of what? The tongue. And those who love it, they will eat the fruit thereof. Which doctors, native doctors, all kinds of satanic priests and agents with their sacrifices, their shams in places. See, li listen, this thing they call sham. Or maybe you see somebody making a sacrifice in a place where there are Junction, T junction, or that kind of, Y junction, or that kind, of, kind of thing. Those things, when they are making those sacrifices, they are making pronouncements. Those things they are saying against whoever they are doing that is cause. Apart from the fact that that is idolatry already. But when they make those pronouncements, those spirits, haven't you had where a witch doctor call somebody in a mirror and kill the person, and the person died physically? Those things are real. You may watch it in the film, but it's real. These are the things that happen. They will just... Now, these things are how people get under serious... And of course, so when it is somebody's father or mother or fa forefather, you see this thing affecting the family, affecting all members of the family. When you come to the family, you look at the house, you look at... You notice that things are not really well with this family. And sometimes they will struggle to come out, but if you don't know the right way to come out, you will still not be able to come out. Amen. We have also seen that when you are not faithful in financial stewardship, like God said in Malachi 3 verse 8, he said, you children of Israel, you are cursed with what? A curse, because you are not paying your tithe. Eh? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offering? Can we read it together? Want to go? You are cursed with what? A curse. Why? For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. So a whole nation can come under a curse. And for the children of Israel, it's because they are unfaithful with their tithes and their offering. Now listen, it may not, the, what applies to them may not apply directly to us because there is a change of New Testament, Old Testament, but let me say this, is a general principle. When a man is unfaithful with his finance in respect to what you are supposed to give to God, where you are supposed to give it, and the way you are supposed to give it, that person can run under a curse. I had a story of a man that was, he bought a new car, and as he was cruising about, the Lord spoke to him and said, go and give it to your pastor. He told his wife, look at what I'm hearing. And they say, hey, Mbao, this one is too much. How can we give a new car we have been saving money to buy to our pastor. I know what they did. They got money and buy provisions. Buy wonderful things. And carried it to the pastor. And the pastor received it. The pastor doesn't know what was going on. Received it with joy. <laughs> Prayed for them. So want to appreciate God for the new car. And then while they were going home, the car ran, ran under a trailer. And everything in the car died. Finished. The car died. Everything there died. God was merciful to them. Both of them came out alive. It was in the hospital that they now said, please let us say the truth. Eh? God told us to do this. We did it. On the way, they didn't finish going home. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, how can we be released from causes, whether it is your own or from your father or from your family lineage or from the pattern. You are struggling, but you are not seeing something. Sometimes you look at your brothers, you look at your sisters, you notice that the same thing is happening to them. It is a pattern. How do we come out from there? Listen. Listen to this. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law that the blessing of Abraham will be upon us. But Many believers are not walking in the blessing of Abraham. Why? 
This question is like what happened last week, if you remember. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Isn't it? We are supposed to be walking in divine health. But how many believers are walking in divine health? How many? Are you getting me now? So, even though the price has been paid, even though Christ has redeemed us, but many of us are still struggling under causes. So, how do we get released? Number one is to be honest. First of all, acknowledge, recognize that the way things are going with me is not the way it should go. Are you following me? Sometimes, you see this curse is saying over a man's head that he will never get to or go beyond his own father or mother. And the person will be, that's, you know, initially I said, causes, places, limitation. So you must be ready to say, yes, I am not really working in this divine blessing. That's why I said, if you are not working in divine blessing, you are working under what? Don't deny it. Don't say, hey, I'm not cursed. I'm... Listen, acknowledge it first. When you acknowledge the level of poverty in your family, in your own life, financial hardship, insufficiency, as you are struggling to come out, you enter. When you recognize that since you get married, your life has gone down below what it is before you got married. When you recognize the way your spiritual life has been going, you'll be able to say yes. I have this problem. And then the next thing is to repent. If the people that are called by my name, Second Chronicles 7 verse 14, if the people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their what? Wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and do what? So the land can be sick. That's what we mean by cause. When you acknowledge and recognize that this struggle is too much, this is how your father struggles and died. This is how your mother struggles and died. I was talking to men yesterday, the married men. I said, listen, many married men, they die before their time. Am I correct? We have a lot of widows in the society because the married men, before you know it, one thing or the other, they are gone. And they will leave the, the children and the mother. It's, it's almost becoming a culture, a norm in the society. Why? And what killed a father is coming to kill his son. Somebody is walking out of course. Amen. And walking into divine blessing today, today. So, you have to repent. Repent of your own sin. Repent of the sin of your fathers. Your forefathers. My own family. I didn't come from America. I came from Africa. Are you hearing me? My grandmother is a dedicated idol worshiper. I didn't meet my grandfather. But I heard that he's the masquerade carrier of the village. Are you getting me? These things that they did with these spirits can come and begin to affect the second generation, third generation, fourth generation. They, are, they worshipped idol and God said, when you have other gods before me, these are the things you will suffer. And these are what even believers have been suffering. But now we must be free from these things. We are walking out of these things. Now listen, after today, after today, this kind of thing because it's spiritual. That's why he told us that God told me that before we can talk about prosperity, physical things, how to work in prosperity, we need to handle divine blessing first. Because blessing is spiritual. Cause is spiritual. You don't see it. You don't see the spirit. So when you handle them and deal with them, you will see testimonies. And you have to deal with them properly. Properly. The spirit realm is it's like a law court. If you don't present the reason why the spirits should go, the spirit will not go. And one of the reasons why these spirits must leave us is because Jesus has shed a blood. 
Colossians chapter 1. If you read from verse 12, it says, Thanks be to God who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of your dear son. Verse 14, he said, In whom we have what? Redemption. Through what? Through his blood. The what? The forgiveness of sin. Because the blood of Jesus has been shed. That's why we can be free. Are you getting me? Whether your father is an occultic man or secret society or your grandfather, the worship idol, and the thing has extended towards you. By the blood of Jesus, whatever the ancestry has done, you are getting out of that. Yeah. It is when the sins are forgiven by the blood and when we are bought over by the blood that we can stand and that's why what we are talking about is not just for if you are still not born again, you are still a sinner, you are not a believer, you have not given your life to Christ, you are not serious with God. The truth is that you, you just need to do that immediately because you will not be able to walk out of these causes. No, it will come upon you, pursue you, overtake you. And you see, it's stage by stage. First of all, it will come upon you. So when it comes upon you, you, you will still be doing something. You, you think that the thing is planning to destroy you at the age of 40. Sometimes you notice that in a particular case, it is when the person is about to manifest. Are you getting me at all? I was casting, a, casting out a demon from a young man one day. And the demon began to speak through him, through his mouth. And the demon said that I am here. And the reason why I'm here is because... At that time, when he is about to become somebody to kill him. You know the time they say he has gotten money. He has laid foundation. He has bought a car. He is doing this and doing that. So that's the time I want to take off his life. It's a curse. So you have to first of all acknowledge and repent of every known sin including the one in your family line, plead the blood of Jesus. And then, we are going to do all of that now. And then, if you are not giving your life to Christ, you have to do so immediately. Then number three, you have to renounce the causes and declare your release from them. You have to what? Renounce the causes and declare your release from them. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. Let's read it together. One to go. For by your ways you will be justified. And by your ways you will be Get me Isaiah 60, 65 verse 16. You have to renounce these causes, reject them and declare that you have been redeemed. So that he who blesses himself in the earth shall be bless himself in the God of truth. So, there is something called blessing yourself. Are you getting me? Yes. And in Christ Jesus, the Bible said, death and life are in the power of tongue. So, you have to confess it. Psalm 107 verse 2, what did he say? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What's the meaning of that? Christ has redeemed me from the cause of the law. He said, if I am redeemed, I should what? I should say it. Declare it. Say so. De and keep saying it. Don't stop it. Because as you say it, it comes to reality. That's why in Romans chapter 10 verse 10, he said that with heart men believe it, but with mouth confession is made unto Confession is meant unto deliverance, unto redemption. Get me also Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. You know, we, we have to, these are the things we are going to do now, stage by stage. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Verse 19. Speaking to what? What's the meaning of speaking to yourself? Speaking to yourself. In what? In psalms. And what again? And hymns. 
and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to God. When you are filled with the Spirit, you speak to yourself. Speaking to yourself is different from speaking to one another. And when you talk about speaking to yourself, Psalms, what does Psalm say? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Are you following me? That's Psalm 112, the one we read at the beginning. There was a time for almost about one year in my family we read it after every night's devotion. We read it, recite at the time we started memorizing it. Speaking to yourself, speaking to yourself in Psalms. Psalm 16 verse 5 and 6, what did he say? The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my Lord. Verse 6. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yeah! I have a godly heritage. Speaking to yourselves. So, part of the system of coming out of this battle and getting into divine blessing and working in it is speaking to yourselves. And then, finally, resist the devil. Because there are demons walking after every cause to execute the cause. When you renounce the cause, bless yourself by Calvary sacrifice. Then, you resist the devil. James 4 verse 7 said, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Then do what? Resist the devil. And he will what? That is telling you that if you don't resist the devil, he will not flee. Did you get that now? Resist is a very active word. Fight the devil. Fight him. Resist him. Say to him, you cannot stand. Every fighter must be provoked. You must be very angry at what the devil has been doing. What this demon spirit causes has been doing. After this prayer, this evening we are going to pray. Because we are going to pray now. Many of you, you will see instant miracles happening around your life. Yeah. Around your health. Yeah. There are so many things you have prayed, believed God for in many areas. And you, all your efforts seems to be... These things, what is responsible for them, we are about to deal with it. These are causes and this, there are demons behind them. We are going to deal with them line by line, step by step. And when we are through... Watch out for testimonies. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's rise on our feet. Please, if you are not inside the hall, come inside the hall. Because this prayer is going to be very intense and very serious. Sometimes somebody may want to travel out. You want to, you see that everything you do will not work. Something is responsible. The first thing is to identify the causes. I believe you must have done that. So we are going to number two. Repentance. Prayer of repentance of any sin that you have committed in the past. The ones that your fathers committed. Can you repent on, on your own behalf and on the behalf of your family now? Don't say I have done that before. We are under a corporate anointing. And make sure that you concentrate and do it well. Confess all the limitations, all the struggles that we have been passing through. Today is their end. Just say, God, I'm sorry. Make sure that you are doing that well. Don't just do it casually. Make sure that truly you are repenting from your heart.